if you have your, uh, your Revelation book, if you need a Revelation book, we'll hook you up. Uh, you're going to have to bear with my voice. I've been, let's see, one, two, three. This will be my fourth time I have ministered. <laughs> Got a few more to go this week, so y'all just pray. Bear with me tonight. Amen. I'm singing bass in the praise band. So, uh, yeah, 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 God is real. And so, uh, if you, um, y'all remember on page 24, real quick, I'm going to go down. On page 24, talking about the church of Sardis. Everybody say Sardis. Sardis. Rest of us say Sardis. 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 So the church of Sardis, uh, man, they had some issues, and the church of uh, Sardis was called the dead church. Listen, I don't want to, listen, there's nothing dead about Jesus. If you act dead, you probably don't know Jesus. You, with the, this community, this area, and I'm telling you, y'all can look at me if you want to. I'm telling you, God is going to use this church. God's going to use Elkhorn Baptist Church to be the forerunner. Great, to see great and mighty things in this community. And I made my mind, if you're ready, watch this. I don't mean to be mean. I'm going to do it with or without you. I'm going to do it with or without you. So I believe in the power of Jesus Christ. My whole life's changing. Every day, my life is changing. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I don't want to be called the church of Sardis. I, I don't want to be a, a dead Christian. I don't want to be that. So at the bottom of page 24, real quick, God tells Sardis to repent. That is one thing you do not hear in churches a lot today is about repentance. Everybody says, well, Brian, I, I've, I'm all right. No, you're not. Everybody in here tonight, you need to repent, including me. Everybody needs to repent. Your mind, your attitude, your actions, your behavior, the list is long and distinguished. Everybody needs to learn how to repent constantly. Constantly. So Sardis, they said, I'm not repenting. And God says, but if you do repent, he told me, I will clothe you in a white garment. I, I, I started thinking about this. When I get to heaven, God says, if you, if you make it to heaven, which I am going to make it to heaven, because I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I have repented of my sins. I've asked him to come into my heart and save me. So I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. Amen? And so here's the deal. When I get there, God's going to hand me a white garment. A white garment. White means pure. White as brides wear a white dress. It means the purity. And so uh, God's going to hand us a white garment means that you are the righteousness of God. And I'm going to mess y'all up because another thing God's going to hand y'all, we'll get this later on, is a harp. You say, Brian, I can't play no instruments. That's why it's going, you got to die to the flesh and get up in the spirit. Yeah, you got to do that. So, but anyway, listen, we'll talk about the harp later on anyway. So, um, so the second thing he says, you'll be continued in the, in the book of life. And we're going to talk about the book of life and the Lamb's book of life. Because I want to go a little bit deeper tonight. Or is everybody ready to go just a little bit deeper tonight? Because I, I want y'all to, I want y'all to, iron sharpens iron. Y'all know how to sharpen iron, right? You got to rub against the grain. If you don't have iron sharpeners in your life that is sharpening you, you're going to stay a dull Christian all your life. You're going to be offended all your life. You've got to have some iron sharpeners in your life that challenges you to dig into the Word of God and not just surface read it. Say, God, what's that mean to me? How can I apply that to my life? So there is a difference between a book of life and the Lamb's book of life, and I'm going to explain that tonight. And the third thing he said, be confessed before the Father. And I thought about that, man, can you all imagine? Can you imagine when you stand before God, God's going to announce your name to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all the angels, and everybody in heaven. Hey, Bobby Walker is in heaven. Hey, Bobby Walker is a child of God. Bobby has just arrived. And y'all ain't going, that's all right. But I'm, I'm just telling you, his name, your name is going to be mentioned in heaven. So let's go over to page 25 real quick because I've got a lot of ground to cover, and hopefully I can do this. Um, these are my personal notes, and I wanted to give them to you guys. I had a professor in college, he said, he said I'll never tell you everything I know. And I said, I want my money back. Uh, and some people like that. They're, they're like, I'll never tell you everything. I want you I want y'all to be better than me. I want y'all to be a whole lot smarter than me. Now, that shouldn't take a lot, you know. But I, I want to give y'all everything that I've got that I know about Jesus Christ, because here's the deal. If we come together and unify, can y'all imagine the force we'll be? We'll be a force to be reckoned with, I'm telling you. So listen, the book of life. If you have your Bible, Revelation chapter 20, I'm going to explain this, because a lot of people are very confused. The book of life, the Lamb's book of life, what's the difference? 
Is my name going to be in the book of life or is my name going to be in the Lamb's book of life? So where, 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 where are you at? So the book of life, everybody say the book of life. Book of life, Revelation chapter 20. I'm going to read this very quickly. I'm going to read it over you guys, and we're going to talk about it really quick. And then uh, you can go over to Revelation 21 too. So verse 12, Revelation chapter 20 says these words, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books, books. We're going to talk about this later on. What in the world is he talking about? Books. Books were opened. And then another book was opened. There's a bunch of books going to be opened up in heaven. Which is the book of life. Watch this now. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Don't tell me that it's not important to be faithful to God. Don't tell me that church is not important. Don't tell me how you walk and how you live and how you talk and how you act is not important. Because the books is going to be opened, and they're going to be judged on according to how they lived. Watch, this is, this is so amazing. And the, they, the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the death of Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, and the lake of fire was a second death. If anyone's name, if anyone's, not just death and Hades, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was also thrown into the lake of fire. Don't tell me there's not a literal fire. I hear this all the time. Well, Brian, there's no fire. Where in the world are y'all getting your information? It's in the book. And there is, watch, it is a lake of fire. And people say all the time, well, Brian, you're just going to burn until, until ever how bad you was. You're going to burn according to how bad you was. You wish. You wish. You will burn for eternity. I hope I'm, I hope I'm not talking to lost folk up here tonight. Because if I am, you need to get born again saved. So watch this. It is a lake of fire. Now I want you to go over to Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. That was talking about the book of life. Now look in verse, verse 27. I promise I'll preach in here in just a moment. I'm going to lay a foundation for you. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. This is so, so, so good. It says this, Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those, watch, here it is, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of life. There is a difference between a book of life and a lamb's book of life. Y'all got me? Say, I got you. Now, let's talk about this really quick, okay? Jesus knew he knows all things. He's omniscient. He knows all things. He knows all people. He knows how many hair you got on your head. He knows exactly who you talk to today, what you're going to do tomorrow. Five years from now, he knows exactly when you're going to die. He knows all things. He knew this church sardis by name. Every member of this church. And not many people in Sardis were faithful. There wasn't. They done what they wanted to do. Sort of like a church today. They done what they wanted to do, act the way they want to act. I'm going to heaven. I done a funeral today, and I told them, I said, y'all wish. I'm telling you, you cannot live wrong and die right. You better, you better check it. I'm telling you, I know we're South Central. I know we're in the Bible Belt. I know that everybody, everybody who's, goes, who's in uh, Camelsville, when they die, they go to heaven. That's what everybody acts like. It's wrong. It's wrong. But watch this. He said, he, but he, he could identify the ones who were. He said, they were the ones who had refused and defiled their garments. The ones who refused and dirtied and by influence by sin and those who were around them. He promised that he would walk with them in right roads. Watch this. Why? Because they had sincerely accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior by the power of his Holy Spirit and lived holy lives. We need to live holy lives. Jesus promised, and I'm just reading here in this book, but I want to get this in your spirit. Jesus promised never to blot out their names from the book of life. Many people confuse the book of life with the Lamb's book of life, but they're completely different. Now lean in. Here it goes. The book of life is a list of all those who were born once. There is a book of life that Jesus Christ has. Every person who was ever born, 7.4 billion people, this is a thick book. Ever who was ever born once, their name went in this, in this book of life. 
He went in this book of life. But the Lamb's book of life is a list of those who were born twice. Woo. Y'all got me. So in other words, I once was lost in the book of life. But now since Jesus Christ found me, he, he put my name from that book down here to the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, and he don't own a pencil. He don't own an eraser. So when your name, well, hallelujah, when your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that is the security that I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I can see. I once was dead in my sin, but God revived me, and now I'm in the Lamb's book of life. I just wonder tonight, what book are you in? It's serious. I, I, I told my family today, man, it just broke my heart. Broke my heart. I got a family member, man, he's lost. The whole service while I was ministering and preaching, he was talking out loud and just disrespectful and this, that, and the other. And, and after it's over, here's how powerful God is. I went up to him and I hugged him and I said, man, listen, if you're, his mama passed away. And I started thinking, I said, maybe he's just doing this as a cover-up because he's hurt so bad. He don't know how to emotionally show his feelings. And God just, he's changing my heart. And I went up to him and I hugged him and I, I told him I loved him. And I said, man, if you need me, call me and I'll come run and I'll talk with you. And here's what he told me. He said, Brian, thank you for preaching truth. And I thought, in my mind, he wasn't listening. But God is bigger than that. God is bigger than that. I'm telling you all, the anointing of God is so good. Listen, if you're in here tonight, <laughs> you're at the right place at the right time. I'm telling you, God will take you just as you are. But he loves you so much, he won't allow you to remain as you are. And I love that about Jesus. How many of y'all are better tonight than you was last night? Amen. Listen, and even if you fall down, pick your bad self back up. Get back up on your feet. The Bible says if I fall seven, I'll get up eight times. We serve that kind of a God. Listen to me. God is not going to leave us. Now, you got the willpower. You can walk away. But he won't. He won't. This book of life is a list of all those who were born twice. In other words, all those who truly accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. So one person wrote it in this book. He said, when your name goes from the book of life to the Lamb's book of life, that is the, that is the evidence of the security of Jesus Christ. The, your name is in there. And the Bible says that they, once God has you in the palm of his hand, no man can pluck you out. Isn't that good? Now, y'all can believe every eye you want to. Here's what I always said about somebody who believes that they can fall from grace. What a stinking, miserable life. Everything depends upon you. Nothing depends upon God. And here's what I always tell people. And listen, I get, I get blasted all the time. I had one boy call me one night. He said, Brian, he said, you used to be a good preacher. And he said, but now you believe in that eternal security of that stuff. He said, I just don't believe in that. And I said, you're not God. You're not God. And here's the way I look at it. Did God, when, he, when Jesus Christ died on that cross, this solved it for me. If he died for all sin, which one of your sins is going to re-nail him back to that cross? None. None. We try to make God like us. And God's trying to get us like him. You understand? Well, listen to me. God is not an American. <laughs> God, God is not white. He's not. He's not white. He's not an American. He is a Jew to the Holy Ghost. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the Holy God. He's a good father. And if I nailed my son to the cross, anybody's worthy of salvation. I mean, I think it's a disgrace when you try to say, yeah, your sin's greater than his grace. I think it's a sin. Well, my sin is greater than his grace. You better, you better check yourself. No, no, no. His grace is bigger than anything I have ever done in my life. Or I ever will do in my life. Well, Brian, you just got, that's loose grace. No, I just believe in grace. I just believe when, when Jesus Christ died on that cross, it's done, it's finished, it's settled. And now watch this. Y'all ready for this? Jesus Christ is waiting for me and you to live in his glory. 
we got to live in this. I believe the lost people is watching the churches and sitting there going, my God, that Jesus that they say they believe in, but they're living like that? we got all power in this house. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus also promised to acknowledge the names of those who were saved, truly born again. In that line in y'all's book, I want you to write your name right there. I wrote my name, Brian Keith Rafferty. I did, I, and I loved writing every, every letter, B-R-I-A-N. I wrote all cap lock. <laughs> I'm talking, I love writing my name in that line. You know why? Because I'm saved. How many of y'all are saved, born again, on your way to heaven? Enjoy putting your name in that line because one day Jesus Christ is going to say, Beth Cochran, welcome home. You have fought the good fight. You have finished the race and laid up for in store for you as a crown of righteousness. I just wonder how many crowns y'all going to lay at Jesus' feet. Amen? Amen. Here we go. Let's get busy now. Let me remind you. Before I get over here to uh, Philadelphia, let me remind you about Ephesus. Y'all remember Ephesus, the first church we talked about? There's seven churches in Asia, Asia Minor, okay, in the book of Revelation. John the Apostle, not John the Baptist, John the Apostle was the one who wrote the book of Revelation. John the Baptist lost his head. He lost his head. John the Apostle got put in six feet of boiling oil. He came out alive. They couldn't kill this man of God. And I just wish people would realize when God is for you, no weapon can kill you, can stop you, or hurt you, or harm you. If God is for this church, like I know he is, come on, somebody. I'm telling you, we're going to win. We already won. Amen? We already won. But this church called Ephesus was a church without love. Listen to me very, very carefully. One thing every church needs is love. We need to quit judging people. We need to start loving people. And here's what I found out. A lot of people call it karma, Bobby. I just call it Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, how you treat people, it's going to come back and bite your rear end. Yeah. <laughs> That's not political. I'm sorry. I had a little Brian moment. That's all right. It's true. Be careful how you treat people. Because God loves them as much as he loves your bad self. And my granny always told me, uh, y'all heard me say this, Brian, be careful. She called me Brian Keith. Brian Keith, be careful. You live in a glass house on a gravel road. Don't spin tires. So uh, Smyrna, was a, it was a church. Listen to what this church was called, the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> Satan was their pastor. If y'all don't look at me like that. <laughs> Pergamos was called the church in Satan's city. Thyatira was called the adulterous church. They had adultery going on in their church, and they did not condemn it. They lived with it. They said, it's okay, and I'm telling you, they suffered for it. Sardis was a, was a dead church. We just talked about that. Philadelphia, who we're getting ready to talk, was a faithful church. And Laodicea was a disgusting church. Listen to this before I go on. There was only one church. Everybody say only one church. One church out of seven that had a good name. Some serious stuff. They say, theologians will say that each church represents the 21st century. You may know a church that's dead, as dead, as dead can be. And if you're a guest here tonight and they're dead, leave. I used to be so, I was sitting there going, Brian, don't tell people to leave their church. Why do you want to hang around dead things? Leave. I had a woman, I was doing a revival, I told you. She came to me and she said, I can't leave this church. And I said, why? She said, well, my grandmother, my, my mama, she said, my, no, my grandmother is buried out back. I said, honey, if your grandma could get up, she'd leave too. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I'm telling y'all the Holy Spirit's alive. I used to, you, Brian, you know, how do you know I'm looking at y'all? I see a lot of lives that have been resurrected in this house. I see a lot of people that used to be drug addicts. I feel the Holy Ghost. Lost and undone, on your way straight to hell. And God stepped in. He saved your soul. He resurrected your spirit. And you're going to act dead? Somebody help me. You can't act dead. Well, Brian, I, I'm just not emotional like you. I'm, I'm going to solve this one right here too. Y'all ready? What is your emotion? It's your soul. It's your soul. What is your soul? It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Who gives you your soul? Jesus did. 
Jesus did. It is okay for some, and listen, we're gonna, we need to stop this religious stuff in this community. Some people, they're very emotional. Some people, when they worship, they dance. Some people, they shout. Some people raise their hand. Some people sit down. There's not a, there's not a correct way, just as long as there is a way. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Amen. Pound that, brother. Amen. So listen, I wrote my personal notes. There was only one church out of seven that had a good name. One church out of seven had a good name. And I wrote mine, Brian, I'm just wondering what God would call Elkhorn Baptist Church. What would God say about Elkhorn? What would God say about Three Trees? What would God say about Campbellsville Baptist? Brian, you're calling church. Yeah. Absolutely, because we're one church. Well, if, if your church was going to be in the book of the Bible, what would God write over your church? Let's make it really personal. What would God say about your life? What would God say about your life? Now, since we're ready to go now, let's go to page 27. Ooh, cold wave. Here we go. The faithful church. Everybody say the faithful church. Yeah, Philadelphia is called the faithful. This is the one church I'm, I'm excited to teach about. The rest of them, man, Lord Jesus Christ, adultery going on in the church, the, the dead church, the church that did not give God praise. But Philadelphia was a faithful church. Listen to this. Out of all seven churches, I, I wrote my personal notes, I would, I would have wanted to been a member of the church of Philadelphia. I would have. This church was faithful to Christ and faithful to his word. The church of Philadelphia was named after a king of Pergamos. And this king, Atlantis Philadelphus, Philadelphia stands for the city of brotherly love. That's why when you, when you see the word Philadelphia, they, they, you talk about love. Philadelphia is talked about seven times throughout the Scripture, and this is the seventh time it's talked about in Revelation. This is the final time this church was talked about in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. And notice how the Apostle John describes the attributes of God. In verse 7, he says, These are the words of him who is holy, who is true, and who holds the key of David. What opens up, what God says, what one, when he opens up, one cannot shut, and what he shuts, one cannot open. We talk about the open door all the time. How many of you are thankful that when God opens the door, no man, no church, no religion, no doctrine, no pastor, no leader, no person can shut that door when God opens it? Yeah, when God opens it. Holy means different or separate from everything and everyone. I want you all to lean in and listen to me very carefully. God desires every one of us to be holy. None of us are the same. Thank God for that. Thank God y'all y'all don't y'all are not little Brian's. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God I'm not a little Mike. You know? Amen. Thank God. We're all different. I told you before we're about 7.3 billion people, and nobody has the same fingerprint. We're all different, but we're all beautiful. It means true, it means real or genuine. God says, I want you to be holy, I want you to be different, I want you to separate yourself, I want you to be real, and I want you to be genuine. He holds the key of David, the keys of hell and Hades. And so we're going to go on down through here real quick, okay? According to Revelation 3, 7, Jesus has the power and the key to open up all the treasures of the kingdom. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Dr. Billy Graham made a statement one time. He said, heaven is full of answered prayers, but nobody's coming and getting them. Heaven is full of healing. Heaven is full of answers. Heaven is full of everything, but nobody believes in it enough to be strong enough to come get it. Billy Graham said that. And we can prove that. He can prove that in the Bible. He says, heaven is full of treasures. What Jesus was telling the church of Philadelphia was, you have an opportunity to walk through a door, an open door, that leads to all the treasures of the kingdom of heaven. If I had a prayer for Elkhorn Baptist Church, here it would be. You ready? We would die empty. We would die empty. That we would experience the treasures of heaven. Can you all imagine? Could y'all imagine if we, as a body of Christ, stood at an open door? You walk through an open door and there's healing. You walk through an open door and prophecy. You walk through an open door and there's, there's answer to prayers. We serve a God that has open doors. Listen to me very carefully. 
I want you all to walk through your doors that God opens. Watch this. You can't walk through my door. My door is made for me. I can't be Willie. I can't be Jimmy. I can't be nobody. I can't be you. But God, I feel this in my spirit tonight, that God has given us an open door to Elkhorn Baptist Church, and shame on us. Shame on us if we don't walk through it. Shame on us if you don't walk through it. Wouldn't it be sad to go to heaven? And when you get to heaven, God says, come here, I want to show you something. I want to show you everything I had in store for you. I want to show you all the miracles I had for your life. I want to show you all the signs and the wonders. I want to show you all the open doors that I had for you in your life. But you didn't walk through one of them. You didn't walk through any of them. I'm telling you all what God's doing in my life. And I'm glad that God is still in my life. God's still working with me. I'm not apologizing no more for walking through open doors. I'm not apologizing no more for what God is doing in my life. God has given all of us gifts. Here's what I'm asking us to do as the body of Christ. Y'all ready? Walk through that open door. Walk through that open door. If God opens the door, walk through it. You say, Brian, what, what's in it? I don't know. But God does. But God does. Jesus is the great door opener. Hallelujah. What does an evangelist, evangelic church need to know? That Jesus is holy. He's a true God. He's a key holder. He's the one that opens and shuts the doors. He's the one that controls all of life's obstacles. Or thing. He's God. He's God. How many of y'all know we can trust God in this church? We can trust him. But we just got to keep walking through the door. Walking through the door. Walking through the door. And so, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, it, it says, for you have little strength. Listen to this. In the Greek language, this means you have little strength in yourself. How many of y'all know that's so true? We think we're big bad. We think, man, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm strong. And I told him today at the funeral home, I said, it's crazy. I said, I have buried more young people this year than I have ever before in my life. Ever. The funeral home director today said, Brian, it's crazy. Had nine deaths in one week. Nine deaths. And I'm not trying to scare y'all. I'm just trying to help y'all. I'm trying to make y'all realize, man, listen, I know we take life for granted. But we are blessed to be in this house tonight. You are blessed to be sitting here tonight. You are blessed to have air in your lungs that you can breathe. Watch, you ready? Get over yourself. You are alive, not for you, but for him. If anybody is worthy for the praise, it's his name, Jesus. And any, listen to me, I'm trying to help churches today. If there's any problems in churches, it's because of the people. It's because of the people. Jealousy will kill a church. Quick. The Bible says that jealousy is like a, a grave. Jealousy will kill. It can kill relationships. I don't even know what it's coming. Are y'all going to bear with me because I feel the Holy Spirit. He's speaking. You got to be careful to get over yourself, your own ideas, and what, what, God, what you think. I'm just telling you, you got to get over yourself. And he said these, for you have little strength. And boy, when you start realizing, when I swing my legs over my bed every morning, I'm sitting there going, God, thank you, I'm alive. God, thank you that I can breathe. God, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I can talk. I can hear. I can see. God, and y'all, listen, I'm just telling y'all the truth. you got to get to the, I feel the, you got to get to the point in your life, if it had not been for Jesus, I would not be here tonight. If it had not been for Jesus, we wouldn't be as a church. We wouldn't be as a people. We wouldn't be nothing in this world if it had not been for Jesus. Somebody give him praise in here tonight. I'm telling you the truth. He's my heir. He's everything I got, Jimmy. Dale, yeah, you said it tonight, and I love what you said. Dale Henderson said, I hope and pray that I can walk up to people and they know I've been in the presence of God. And if something's wrong in their life, they'll get very uncomfortable. I'm telling y'all, 
in Jesus Christ's name, if we believe this Bible, and I do, if things are lining up right now in this earth, we better get ready. We're going to see things. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. The religious people are going to get very uncomfortable in this last hour. Religious people, and listen, there's going to be hell to pay. But here's what I know. God can do more with less. God can do more with less. God will take two people and put them in a jail cell, and he'll open up doors. So, here, listen to me. In the Greek, this means you have a little strength in yourself. What Jesus was saying, all they need, and I preached it this morning, is Jesus behind them. God plus, I wrote this down, I thought this was good, Holy Spirit. God plus one faithful church member is the majority. Do y'all believe like that? Come on now, listen. Do you believe like that? I'm talking about it, 450 prophets of Baal. We got to get this, Jimmy. Because we have read the Bible as a prehistoric book. We, we, we read it and we put it on the shelf and we're like, boy, thank God for Elijah. <laughs> yeah, he made it on time. You know, you was late tonight. <laughs> but he gave, me, he gave me a fist bump. That's good. That's Doug, Douglas Lloyd. But here, listen to me. At some point in your life, and I'm going to stand before God, and I, I can't wait to stand before him. You know why? I'm going to say, God, I believed every dang word in that Bible. I believed every word in that Bible. God, I preached every word in that Bible. I told them. And if y'all were up in heaven and say, I didn't know, I'm going to say they're lying again. Because I'm just telling you, listen to me. <laughs> it's real. At some point in your life, you've got you to become a chapter in that Bible. You've got to quit saying, boy, that was good for Elijah. No, that's good for Brian. That's good for Beth. That's good for Scott. That's good for Bobby. That's good for Mike. It's good for you, brother man. I'm so glad you're here tonight. Are you getting something? <laughs> good. Amen. He came in tonight hungry. We had prayer out in the hallway. He said, man, I'm here tonight. He said, I got to have a word from God. He said, I'm going through stuff in my life. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. Isn't this something? That means something to me. He ran to God. He ran to church. He could have went anywhere, but he said, I know there's something special. I need to be where God is at. And if I get in the presence of God, I know I can't leave the same way I walked in. Y'all hear what I'm saying tonight? And that's us. That's me. That's you. Get this stuff. Grab the horns of the altar. Who cares if people make fun of you? Are you would you rather please a man? A preacher? Or Jesus. All I'm asking y'all to do is do what Jesus Christ has asked you to do. That's it. Just do what Jesus, you know what Jesus asked us to do? Plunder hell to populate heaven. You know what Jesus asked us to do? He said, just praise my name. You know what Jesus asked us to do? Fall in love with him. You talk about what you love. You talk about what you love. Let me go on and watch this. So I wrote this, Jesus plus you equals the majority. Jesus plus you equals the majority. Y'all, you hear me? All you need is Jesus. Jesus is saying you can have church, but if you want a different or separate holy life, you got to be real, genuine, true, and the door opener of God will find the treasures of his kingdom, holds the key of David, he said, if you want a true church service, I just wanted to think about this. Here's the way my mind thinks. If Jesus Christ was the pastor, how would he run church? He'd run us all out. <laughs> I hope not. No, I mean, listen, I hope not. I hope he walks in the Elkhorn Baptist Church. I hope he walks in. Listen, I love our local churches. I, I'm not jealous of them. I want every church who preaches Jesus Christ to, to prosper. Let's quit talking about other churches, and let's join in as one church. And as a full, can y'all imagine, listen to me, can y'all imagine if 131 churches 
would come together with their resources, with their finances, with their spirits. Y'all, could y'all imagine what we would do to this world? Can I be honest with y'all? That's the way God designed us. He didn't design us to be separate. He designed us to be unified, united, to come together. I had a woman call me last night, and one of my pastor buddies, he's put his resignation out, and he's going to be hopefully going to another church. And she called, and she's like, uh, I just want to know what kind of guy he is. And I just sat there, and I said, um, he loves Jesus. He preaches the Bible. Uh, if you want to get uncomfortable, you probably, probably need him. Uh, he's a great guy. And she said, you got anything bad to say? And sometimes I'm like, is that the world that we live in today? We're just looking for something bad to say about people? Church, that's not the church. That's not the church. God's changing your pastor. And I sort of like what he's doing in my life. That I, I can honestly God say for the first time in my life that I love all people. If we say that loosely and lightly, how come we show indifferences in it? Makes you think. Makes you think. And so, man, listen, tonight, what time is it? Oh, i got 10 minutes. Everybody say fly, preacher, fly. <laughs> Here we go, then. Yeah, so Jesus is saying, you can have all this church, you can have whatever you want, but if I'm not there, if I'm not, if I'm not leading, if you're not welcoming my spirit, in the same way for your life, you can live. You can get up in the morning and go about your business. But how many of you know it's a difference when you wake up and say, God, today's your day. God, today I am your servant. God, put a beggar at my gate today. God, put somebody in my path that don't know you. Lord, put a, put a prostitute by me. That messes, see, that messes people up. <laughs> this happened at this church, I got to tell you this. So I, I'm always praying, man, God, send the prostitutes, send the drug dealers, send, send, send people to Elkhorn. Well, um, he did. And so I had a person come to me. This was funny. They're here tonight, so I can talk. I can say this. They come to him, and they said, Brian. They said, you'll never guess who sat by me. And I was like, uh, who? They said, an uh, ex-drug dealer. And listen, this person gave me a high five. And I was so excited about it. And whoever thought you'd be excited about this stuff, you know? And I'm sitting there going, did you talk with them? Oh, honey. Oh, honey. They are a good person. I'm like, yeah. They got the same things in common as my nephew did. And this woman was just blown away. Because my soul sat beside her. And she got to talk to him. And the next thing you know, they had things in common. And what I'm telling you, all we are is a bunch of puzzle pieces. And God's bringing the puzzle together. Feel the Lord. And I'm telling you, when this picture and this puzzle comes together, it's going to be called rapture ready. We're going to be uncomfortable with this church. I hope you are. Look at me. I hope, I hope every one of y'all uncomfortable. I hope God throws you a curveball. Some of you got a routine every day. I do this, I do this, I do this. And when God tries to use you, you're so uncomfortable because. It's true. Just be sensitive to God. I double dog dare y'all first thing tomorrow morning say, God, use me today. God, put somebody in my path today that does not know you. Now listen, you may have to go get them. Watch this. God says, I am the, I'm the one that holds the key to David. Let me lead your life. Let me lead your church. Let me lead all this. The four characteristics of a vibrant church. Watch this. I'm done after this. A church on the move. How many of y'all want to be a church on the move? Man, I'm talking about, listen, be careful how you raise your hand. Because God's going to start moving. If it don't move your direction, you're going to sit there and go, I don't think that's God. Be careful, be careful, be careful. I've also learned over the years, I thank God for unanswered prayers. 
I prayed for stuff, and I'm sitting there going, God, thank you in Jesus Christ's name that, Lord, I didn't marry that person. Y'all, don't you look at me like you did. Yeah, y'all did. Mm-hmm. Four characteristics of a vibrant church. I want to be a vibrant church. I want to be a church on the move. I want to be a church, a soul-winning, life-changing church. I want to be a church that gives to the needy. I want to be a church planner. I want to, I want to help the woman that, that, that's less fortunate. I want to bless people. Y'all look at me just for a moment. I believe a lot of churches are Christian hoarders. They're Christian hoarders. I mean, listen to me. Find somebody less fortunate. Find somebody who's in a, in a, in a valley. <laughs> Find somebody. And all you got to do is say this, hey, how can I pray for you? And y'all will be shocked. You'll be surprised. What God will do. What God will do. Number one, they're always looking and searching for a door of opportunity. I'm like tonight, I'm like, God, what's next? <laughs> I am, I'm just, that's the way my mind, it, I just run like that. My mama said, Brian, one day you're going to get in trouble. Well, that's already come to pass. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I, I want to be vibrant. I don't want to act dead. I want to look for that open door of opportunity. God, what's next for my life? God, what's next for me and Dana? God, what's next for Elkhorn? You say, Brian, just be still. No. God, there's nothing still about God. There's nothing dead about God. He hates death so much, he come out of the grave. So I'm just asking you, I hope you all are challenged tonight. Boy, I'm telling you, when I was studying over this lesson, I was sitting there going, oh, God, we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> God is in control of the church. Look at me very carefully. God is in control of the church. July, the, the, the second week of July, my life changed. Changed. The first week of July, I'm not going to lie to y'all, I was a mess. I was a stinking mess. And I had a man to prophesy over my life. He said, Brian, week number two of July, your life's going to change. I'm not going to lie, Willie. I was sitting there going, God, I hope he's right. <laughs> God, I hope he's right. God, I need a word. I need a word. The second week of July, God asked me a question. I think I've shared this with y'all. Do you believe I'm sovereign? And, uh, and I told him, I said, yeah, I believe you're sovereign, God. And then he asked me for the second time, Brian, do you believe I'm sovereign? And I'm like, God, I, yeah, I told you, yeah, you're You're sovereign. God, I've wrote college papers about you. And, Lord, I preach sermons about the sovereignty of God. And, Lord, I believe you're sovereign. Then he asked me the third time. Third time. You say, Brian, did you hear his voice? Do you all look at me? Yes. I'm tired of people saying that God don't speak. If he don't, you're lost. If he don't speak, you're lost. Because the Bible says that my sheep know my voice. And not only do they know my voice, they follow my voice. Woo! He asked me the third time, he said, Brian, do you believe I'm sovereign? And I said, yes, Lord, I believe you're sovereign. I lied. I lied to Jesus. I did. He said, Brian, why do you talk like this? Because I want you all to know that, man, I am a work in progress. Now, I know you all perfect. But I'm just telling you all, you know what God told me then? He said, if you believe I'm sovereign, then get out of my way. Change my heart. I, look at me. It's hard for me to say this, but I'm going to be honest with you. I was a mess of a heart. I had to repent of my sin. I had to apologize to a lot of people. I'm talking my list was long and distinguished. I had to repent and apologize. Say, will you please forgive me? So, no, I got two that didn't forgive me. It's on them now. You see what I'm saying? It's on them now. But I'm just sitting telling y'all, I've encountered Christ. <laughs> I've had an encounter with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about I've been on the Damascus Road where that mask came off. 
I'm talking about I've got Holy Ghost heartburn, Luke chapter 24. And I'm talking about, man, where God is inside of me and things are changing in my life. You say, Brian, what's going on? I'm telling you, when you have encountered Christ, everything around you, the people look different, the air feels different, the birds don't chirp, they sing and give God praise, people are wonderful, they're great, and you don't want nobody dying to go to hell. When you encounter Christ, you start loving what he loves. And Christ loves people. He loves people. He loves people. And I declare tonight that Jesus Christ is y'all's pastor. I resigned. I'm telling you, the second week of July, I resigned as your pastor. Yep. Sure did, Jimmy. I know you say, well, Brian, why are you still standing here then? I'll answer you. Thank you. I'm learning how to let him flow. How to flow. It's like right now, I feel the Holy Spirit. He's speaking. What's God saying to y'all? Let's start being a spirit-led church. Let's start, let's start letting God be God. What's God speaking to y'all? Don't tell me you're going to come to church all your life and you're going to be like a sponge. But you never get ringed out. <laughs> you, never give, you never give the water back. You never give the glory back. You never give anything back. You say, Brian, I'm in the ministry. That don't mean your heart's in it. I'm talking about, let's, 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 do, let's do some ringing tonight. Come on, it's 8 o'clock. Let's hurry up. Come on, somebody. What's God doing in your life? Talk to me tonight. I, I know God spoke, so don't be disobedient. What did God say to somebody tonight? What is God doing in y'all's life? What are you learning from this study? What, what is God doing in you right now? He's bringing your family closer. How come? You ask him and you trust him. Yeah. Congratulations. He's opened up new doors after other doors have closed. How many of you know just because the door closes, that can be a good thing? Yeah, so many people are standing at that door going, let me in. God said, I closed it. I closed it. Get away from the door. And you know, here's what I have found too, Beth. A lot of people who, are, they put their hand on God's doorknob, and they step and they try to break into somewhere that God says don't enter. If that door is closed, watch me. Leave it. And just do this to God. Listen, I'm learning this stuff. This is crazy. <laughs> crazy. I never thought like this before. Because I, I would be sitting there going, bam, I'm getting in there. You know what I'm saying? And then once I get in, I'm like, God, why would you allow this? And God's like, I didn't. You did. So now I'm learning if it's locked, I'm like, hmm, okay, God. Yeah, Lord, uh, what do you have for me? And then it's so good. Because, man, I walk up to a door and it's open. I'm like, heck, yeah, chew tobacco, chew tobacco. <laughs> walk through it. I don't know where this stuff comes from. Y'all just bear with me, okay? I'm still <laughs> blessing, Lord. I'm, just, I'm y'all's pastor, man. Y'all, y'all did it. Y'all voted for me. So listen, man, listen. What's, what else? Somebody else. We're, we'll pray, I promise. Anybody else? Amen. I'm proud of you. That's huge. If you got anxiety, you don't know what I'm telling you. That's huge right there. Thank you for being at church. I know you was back there. Now you done moved up here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. What's God? What's God? Talk to me. Because, man, this man right here came in tonight. He said, man, I got to have a word. I got to have a word. Send up. Come on. Send up. Come on, man. Send up. Send up. Send up. Talk to me. We love you, man. What's, what's God doing? Yeah, um, he opening up some doors, man. I, I, what, we, what we prayed about, I, I just want you to just, I, I try to keep it myself, so I'm saying I, I was waiting for, but yeah, man, um, honestly, man, I was, this door closed, really, literally, and, and I called another person, and he had these opportunities, he told me to pray on it, so I was like, I was been praying on it, so I come and then when I came here, Brian helped. He was praying with me, and the reason I kept it to myself because I just wanted to just 
just see what God got for me. Now, I don't want to cuss or nothing, but I'll be darned <laughs> if, 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 if everything, everything that was going on, he just said right here, for me anyway, and laid it all out, man, I just take it as like it's got to be from God because I kept it, I kept it away from him. So he wouldn't tell me anything. Yeah. That's, that's okay. God speaks. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote it all down. You did? Man. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, I'm shaking my bed. <laughs> no, it's fine, man. Hey, man, give God praise. Man, thank you for doing that. Hey, man. What about you guys, man? We're going to, this is it, I promise, I think. What about you guys? He's done a lot for you. Five doors. You said, five. what's your name? Jason Morgan. Hold on a minute. Willie, yeah, Willie, come here. Um, did y'all hear what he just said? So, he said he, he's only been to church one time in 14 years. He hated God from the time he was 7 to 21. You know God loves you, right? Thank you for being here, Jason. He's kept you. Do we have a mic? Do we have a mic in here? Listen, if y'all need to leave, go ahead. It's fine. But um, God's dealing with this young man, and I think we need to let God speak to you, man. Are you from this area? You painted this? I have a mic. Okay. Um, no, you can do it. In Jesus Christ's name, take that mic. It's good, man. Listen, God's working right now. Talk to me just for a little bit. Um, so, one time in 14 years. And you said you hated God from 7 to 21. And you also said something about trying to kill yourself. How many times? Talk to him. Put that mic up there. Hold on a second. He's going to hit the mic. It's all right. All right, now go. I, I tried to shoot myself twice, and the gun wouldn't go off neither time. I got a firearm pin mark on it twice, but it would not go off. And then I hung myself because I was purple in the face, palm left mouth. And one of my kids found me. It's the worst thing. My oldest son found me. And it's just. It's been bad. So why why do you think God allowed you to live? He's that plan. So good. I, I've been out of trouble. Like, I've gotten a lot of trouble, and I've been out of trouble for a long time. I just had to go and do it, just get it out under my belt. And uh, ever since then, it's just. So let me ask you a question. Jason, right? Yep. All right. If, if your heart were to stop, I'm talking right now. Do you know that you know that you know you'd be in heaven? Are you, are you born again? Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Yeah. I've read the Bible one time. I was locked in a hole for 122 days with six by six rings soundproof. The only thing I could see was the words on the Bible. And what I could, I, I can't read and write that good because, uh, I mean, my childhood was pretty much ripped. I mean, I don't want a pity party or nothing, but it, it was. And uh, what I could understand of it, I read it then. So, is God dealing with you right now? He's done a lot for me. Yeah. I prayed, well, just here. I ain't been in no trouble since 2014. I had a warrant signed on me for child support. I had no idea about since 2019. The last person in the world I ever expected to pay it, paid it. Uh, two days later, I'd prayed and prayed and prayed. I'd got a job where I'd ask, you know, a good environment, no drugs, you know, no stress. It's happened. Amen. So this Jesus that we're talking about, um, would you Healing like to make him the, the Lord of your life? Would you like to be born again, saved? Yes. I can't. I can't force you, but if God is dealing with you and you feel that tug in your heart, if you're ready, man, I'd I'd be honored yes. to lead you to Jesus Christ. You ready to make that commitment? Yes. Amen. Amen.
So we, we just want you to know we love you, man, and we want to be your family. And uh, I'm going to say this prayer, and if you want to, you don't have to, but if God is dealing with you, and you re- you're ready to surrender your life, now you're not going to be perfect, you're just going to be forgiven. And we're going to help walk you through this journey. But if you're ready, man, I'm ready to lead you to Jesus. You ready? All right. I want you to say this, Jason. Say, dear God, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I'm confessing tonight that I am yours and you are mine. I believe that I am forgiven, that I'm saved, and I'm on my way to heaven. I believe in you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, Jason. Amen. So you know what just happened, right? So that that book of life, your name was written in that, and then now that Lamb's book of life. Now your name is in that Lamb's book of life. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. Amen. Isn't that good? So, man, welcome to God's family. And just think, if you hadn't been here tonight, it's hard to where you'd have been. Amen. Thank you for being here, Richie. Thank y'all for, he works for you, right? Amen. Yeah, amen. Amy, thank y'all. Richie, thank y'all. Amen. Amen. Isn't this great? Man, we had some church tonight. Amen. Isn't that good stuff? Amen. So, Jason, listen, um, we love you. What, what, what's your name? Whitney, good deal, Jason. It's okay. It, she'll probably beat me up after this is over. Or not. I love you, Whitney. <laughs> Don't hit me too hard. Um, but thank you all, seriously, from the bottom of all of our hearts. Thank you. It's the best decision you've ever made in your life, following Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, Willie. Best decision. Best decision. Best decision. Pray for him, Jason and Whitney. And uh, he's been drug-free for how long? You will never, drugs will never touch you again in Jesus Christ's name. You got me? You accept that? You receive that? No more drugs. No more going back to the past. Man, you are, look. Yeah, amen. So you know what just happened tonight? You are forgiven. You're forgiven, man. You're moving on. That's the past. You're a new creation in Jesus Christ. You're not a drug addict. You're a child of God. You got me? That's who you are. Amen? Hallelujah. We love you. Whitney, we love you guys. Thank you all for being here tonight. And I asked Willie, I'm going to ask him to pray over you all. And so, Willie, you be spirit-led, man. Pray over him. Pray over Whitney. Pray over me. (laughs) Pray over all of us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray, guys. Yes, Jesus. There will be no sickness come near them. There will be no disease come near them, nor plague come near their dwelling. Mm. They are blessed in the secret place of the Most High. And right now, in Jesus' name, I say be healed, be blessed, be prosperous in Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, there's a covering over this church. There's a covering over this couple. And there's a covering over everybody under the sound of my voice. And right now, the fire of God is sweeping through here like none other. And it cannot be quenched unless you decide to do it. And God is wanting us to join in. And he's wanting us to move with him. And pastor, right now, as a leader, God is telling you right now, come up higher. Come up higher right now. He's saying, take the lead. Move. Move. He's saying, be on the move. The apostolic move is on right now. So join in, and it's a glorious time for this church and this town and this century that we're living in. 
We ain't backing off. We ain't afraid of the Antichrist. We are not scared of Satan. We are going to take him by his throat, and we're going to cut his head off because he has no authority, and he has no power in our lives. Right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we have all authority, all authority, and we're going in his name at the name of Jesus. Every knee's going to bow, and every tongue's going to confess to the glory of God the Father right now. sick in this room right now, I command you to be healed. In Jesus' name, yes, right Lord. Now, be healed. Hell, right look now. at Jesus. Praise you, God. Pain, I command you to leave. You cannot stay in this building. You cannot stay under the sound of my voice. Jesus is king, and I say go in Jesus' name. Right now, heal, health, prosper in the name of Jesus. I receive it, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. You are the prophet of your own life. Whatever you say goes. Speak the word. Speak the word. Be instant in season right now and from now on. Don't back off. Don't back off. So be it. Father God, we surrender. This is your church, and we are your people. We love you in this place, God. God, I thank you for this precious couple. Lord, we put a blood hedge around them. No weapon, no sickness, no disease, no COVID, no nothing can hurt them or harm them. That's for all of us, dear God. We love you. And God, tonight, something Something shift, something happened, Lord, something is moving. So, God, I just thank you for giving us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We love you. God, I wish there was another word I could tell you, but, Lord, I love you. I am yours. Take me and use us. Use all of us, dear God. Use this church as a lighthouse to this community. May we be the salt and the light. May we win souls, plunder hell, and populate heaven. God, we surrender. Have your way. Bless, dear God, this couple. We just thank you, God, for saving somebody on a Wednesday. And God, save somebody on a Thursday and a Friday and a Saturday and a Sunday and a Monday and a Tuesday. Save somebody every day, God. May this world see Jesus. May this world see a church that loves you and that surrendered to you and not afraid, dear God, to go against the enemy. So, Lord, we love you in this place, and I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And I pray this prayer, believing, dear God, the latter rain, hallelujah, will be better than the former. Bless these people. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer, believing, Lord, you are it. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Somebody give God a big old praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise his name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you guys. What a night. Amen.